Ankles, the most frequently injured area in sporting activities. Why? Well, because they're the most misunderstood area of the body, and that's what we're here to fix. I'll provide you with the five science-based steps to transform your wobbly ankles into bulletproof pillars of strength. Ready? Let's get started. Imagine each step your foot and ankle takes is like the suspension in a car. As your foot hits the ground, the ankle unlocks or everts, letting the foot arch flatten slightly in a move known as pronation. It's the body shock absorber, just like a car suspension compressing to soften a bump in the road. Then, as you prepare to push off, the foot and ankle stiffen back up. This sets the stage for what's known as supination, forming a sturdy base to propel you forward. This entire dance of flexibility and strength, absorbing and pushing, takes on average 0.63 seconds to complete. Let's hit the pause button for a moment and marvel at what's happening at our feet each step. In just over half a second, our body senses the ground, fine tunes its ankle shock absorbers, and then immediately gears up for the next move. Imagine doing this at hyper speed while running, zigzagging, and leaping over obstacles, all on unpredictable terrain where no two steps are exactly the same. It's like having a supercomputer in your feet, processing vast amounts of information at record-breaking speed. This connection between the brain and the ground must therefore be razor-sharp, fine-tuned, and always on point. I mean, who wants a dial-up connection for anything? We want that fiber optics line. Now, this understanding is at odds with most shoe designs today, which prioritize comfort to the point that they make you feel less. The idea is to give you the sensation of walking on clouds, but let's just come back down to reality for a moment. This dreamy comfort is actually putting a speed limit on how fast our feet and ankles can gather information and communicate with our brain. And since we don't slow down our bodies to match the footwear, we end up with a mismatch between our movement speed and our reaction times. So let's take the same step sequence we analyzed while barefoot and try it again with a pair of cushion shoes. After impact, the ankle follows the usual routine, unlocking to allow the foot to pronate, absorb the ground reactor forces, but then, because of a sensory delay brought on by those cushiony shoes, it doesn't snap back into supination to get you ready for push-off. Instead, pronation just keeps on going, wandering beyond its safe zone and into a risky area known as overpronation. This isn't just foot speculation, it's been scientifically proven. A recent study comparing running in cushion shoes to running barefoot had the researchers examining the maximum degree of ankle motion among the participants. What they discovered was that when running in cushion shoes, the participants' ankles were 53.8% less stable than when barefoot, as measured by the maximum degree of eversion. Being barefoot is what allowed the other group to react more naturally, helping the ankles remain stable. To wrap up this point, if you want more stable feet and ankles, you need to feel the ground beneath you. Once you've done that, we'll dive into the next step, foot strengthening. Since the ankles use the feet as their base of support, strong intrinsic foot muscles serve as essential building blocks. Each of the four layers of muscles helps shape a prominent arch and keeps the ankles firmly in line. Skeptical? Give this a try. Place your feet on top of your knee and relax it entirely. Grab your heel and give it a wiggle. It should feel as loose and relaxed as a Sunday drive. Now, without changing your ankle position, flex your toes like you're late for work on a Monday to activate those intrinsic foot muscles. Hold that contraction and try to wiggle your heel again. The difference will be as clear as day showcasing how these foot muscles are the unsung heroes of ankle stability. And this isn't just some party trick, science backs it up. A study from the Journal of Applied Biomechanics found that low arched runners had a whopping 17.3% more movement through the ankle joint compared to the high arched counterparts. In layman's terms, the ankles of the low arched bunch were about as stable as jelly in an earthquake. And they didn't just wobble more, they wobbled faster. The motion through the ankles occurred at a 32% faster rate. This speedy wobbly is a telltale sign of poor ankle control. Imagine driving with a heavy foot on the gas, but no hands on the wheel. That's the low arch runner's ankle for you. This combination of excess motion and zero control makes low arch runners more prone to foot and ankle injuries, much like texting while driving. If I had a magic lamp, 
my first two wishes would be to put an end to all texting while driving and to strengthen people's feet. But since genies are out of stock, let's all agree to keep our hands on the wheel and eyes on the road. As for the foot strengthening, we don't need a genie for that either. Just head over to barefootstrength.com and buy our strong feet class. It has more than 35 tutorials taking through each step of the foot strengthening process. But if you're a bit of a penny pincher and not ready to shell out for the Ferrari of foot strengthening courses, no worries, you can simply go barefoot. A study showed that just four months of gradually increasing your barefoot exercise time can elevate your arches by an impressive 4.7 millimeters. But hold on, it gets even better. Another study rounded up high level netball players and put them through an eight week training course and split them into team barefoot and team sneakers. Results, the barefoot crew nearly doubled their scores in stability, agility, and speed tests compared to the sneaker wearing squad. Think of going barefoot like trading a cushy office job for a manual labor gig. Suddenly, your feet are put to work, making them tougher and stronger. It's just how the laws of strength building operates. Next up, let's talk big toe alignment. When the great toe is well aligned, it serves as the cornerstone for what we call the tripod foot. It's the blueprint of foot design, the one you're born with. Fast forward a few decades, and what do we see? A shift from the tripod to what we can call the diamond foot shape. It's as if the big toe just watched a horror movie and wants to sit on the laps of the neighboring toes. The unfortunate ending to that plot, a bunion. So why is the tripod shape the superhero of foot stability? Two reasons. First, it gives you a wider base, much like the foundation of pyramids. The second reason, well, it delves into the nitty gritty of foot arch mechanics. Allow me to shine a spotlight on a real star player in this game, the abductor halysis, our MVP of intrinsic foot muscles and the linchpin for arch stability. It's one of the three pillars supporting our tripod foot. This muscle's superpower is linked to its cornerstone, the big toe. So if that cornerstone shifts, it drags the abductor halysis out of alignment, causing the pillar to crumble. The result, a less stable diamond shaped foot. In technical terms, the abductor halysis is pulled from a high leverage position to one with less pull compromising its ability to hold up the arch. So now comes the burning question. What knocks a big toe out of alignment and how can we get it back on track? Well, our magnifying glass must turn towards the usual suspect, shoes. Take a look at these popular trainers next to my foot. See the mismatch? The shoe narrows down to a point completely ignoring the natural contours of my foot. Now let's see the shoe in effect on my toes. Exhibit A, misaligned toes. Maybe we should rename these things toe crushers instead of sneakers. And if you think other shoes are the exception, think again. Here's my foot in your average running shoes. Same crime scene. Research shows us what happens if we don't solve this problem early enough. A study involving 176 folks found that a staggering 80% were strutting around in shoes too narrow for their feet. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison we recreated from the study, contrasting the average foot shape of the participants with the average interior of their shoes. The mismatch is obvious, but what's more interesting is that the average foot shape among the participants was diamond shaped. They also happen to be between the ages of 62 and 96. It's a glimpse into our own foot future if we don't step into the correct shoes. So to keep our toes aligned, our foot muscles doing the art supporting heroics and our ankle steady, we need shoes shaped like, well, feet. All right, I've got two more crucial points to cover. Let's wrap this up. When we walk, run, or squat, our ankles need a sufficient amount of dorsiflexion. That's the fancy term for the knees over the toes action. Now, when the ankles get stiff, it makes you walk like a duck. Seriously, we see this all the time in people's walking and squatting patterns. It's practically a wildlife preserve out there. Why does this happen? Well, when the ankles are tight, your brain goes into MacGyver mode, trying to find new ways to get from point A to B. It does this by spinning the feet outwards, collapsing the arch through overpronation, and essentially turning the midfoot into a makeshift second ankle joint. The fallout, a shaky foundation, making the entire body unstable. 
This explains why a study in the Journal of Science and Medicine in Sport found that folks with ankle instability had a higher rate of dorsiflexion restriction when jogging. Other research piles on, connecting wobbly ankles to messed up knees and a buffet of sports injuries. So here's the takeaway. Want stable feet and well aligned ankles? Focus on improving your ankle mobility. Our previous YouTube video has all the hacks you need. The links are in the description. The fifth and final step to achieving invincible feet and ankles? Power up those glute engines. You see, both the feet and glutes are stabilization superstars. While the feet work from the ground up, the glutes take a top-down approach. Give it a try. Balance on one leg while barefoot. Soon enough, you'll feel a burn in both your feet and glutes. That's the dynamic duo of stabilization in action. This isn't just gym talk, it's science. A 2016 study aimed to correct overpronation in two groups of people. To refresh your memory, overpronation is when the ankle rolls inwards too much. So the one group engaged solely in foot strengthening exercises while the other worked on both the feet and the glutes. The results? You guessed it. The team that strengthened both the feet and the glutes saw a significant improvement in their pronation over the foot-only crew. It's incredible to witness the synergistic effect of the feet and glutes working together to maintain stability. I just love discovering the connection between the seemingly unrelated body parts like the glutes and feet and revealing their deep-rooted alliance. It's like a never-ending scavenger hunt and I want to thank you all for watching and giving me the chance to take you along for the ride. If you're itching to delve even deeper into the workings of our body, check out these other videos. See you there. Thank you.